In the age of reboots and sequels of beloved classic shows, that 70s show has been given another revival, and unlike the failed attempt with that 80s show, that 90s show succeeds by continuing the story of the Foreman family in Point Place, Wisconsin, even if it does rely a little too heavily on its predecessor. I am back, baby! Son of a a new girl. Set 15 years after the end of that 70s show, that 90s show finds Eric and Donna living happily married in Chicago and parents to a young, awkward teenager named Leia. I'm a pretty big deal in the Bay Club. That's not up for debate. They visit Eric's parents, Kitty and Red, in Wisconsin for the 4th of July before Eric and Leia go on their father-daughter space camp retreat. But after she bonds with the riot girl next door, Gwen and her friends, Leia requests to spend the rest of the summer with her grandparents and her new basement crew. Whoa. The crew consists of Gwen, her himbo half-brother, Nate, and his controlling, witty girlfriend, Nikki, sarcastic realist, Ozzy, and attractive goofball, Jay Kelso. Yes, the son of Michael and Jackie Kelso. That means that 90s show sticks to the same format and mood as the original series, with the kids spending their summer on random hijinks. Leia is endearing as the wallflower, basically the girl version of her father as a teen. Nate and Nikki, like Michael Kelso and Jackie, are the shallow, incompatible couple. Ozzy is comparable to Fez, as both were seen as outsiders, Gwen is the rebel, like Eric's best friend Stephen Hyde, and Jay is a dopey version of Donna, the love interest. If the formula worked before, it should work again, right? To some extent, sure. The characters individually are comical, especially Ozzy, whose sardonic one-liners are amusing. I'm pretty sure Osh Gosh Begosh here is gonna get carded. <laughs> But as a group, they lack the chemistry to believe in the relationship drama. Even the season finale, which ended on an emotional cliffhanger, felt flat and unearned. The show does play into the 90s well with its music and subtle callouts to glamour shots, snap bands, blockbuster, and even the movie Clerks. It's also fun to see Red and Kitty adapt to the ever-changing society by being introduced to the internet. But the series truly works because of its connective tissue to the original. Fans of that 70s show can expect many inside gags and Easter eggs, with the pilot episode especially completely stuffed with references. Deborah Jo Rupp, Kurt Wood Smith, and Wilmer Valderrama fall back into their roles as if no time has passed, with Valderrama stealing every scene he's in. It's delightful to see familiar and some unexpected returning characters in the series, even if newcomers may not understand the inside jokes. Yeah, we got it, Dan. Thanks. That 90s show is at its best when the gags relate to the original series, especially with the high circle and dealing with Red and Kitty. But that's putting too much weight on the older cast members when the show should focus on the kids of the present day. Or in this case, the kids of the 90s. That's not to say that, if given another season, they can't improve on that aspect. The teen characters have the potential to be even better than their predecessors, but nepotism can only get you so far. Well, I did my part. Netflix's That 90s Show is a blast from the past of both the 90s and the memories from That 70s Show. With funny moments filled with nostalgia, That 90s Show is charming and has a lot of potential. The series follows the same format as the original, which works for the characters and their storylines, but relies too heavily on the original cast, leaving little room for the new wave of talented teens to fully develop their relationships with each other. No dancing. No dancing. You're like the guy from Footloose. <laughs> No dancing, you guys. For more TV reviews, check out what we thought of Velma and The Last of Us Season 1. And for everything else, stick with IGN. When you stand behind your kids, it's easy to put your foot in your ass. We got it.